Hey everybody, welcome to this breaking ish discussion of executive privilege. I've done this more than once, but I believe it requires a bit of an update considering uh, Mike Pence's subpoena by Jack Smith and Donald Trump now moving a, to block the subpoena by asserting executive privilege. Uh, a lot of scholars have discussed why Donald Trump will fail. I am just another voice that, explain, that explains the situation in a manner that I see specifically fitting for this situation. Now, I'm going to read a small blurb that I wrote, and then I will break that down. While Donald Trump's actions have nothing to do with winning on the merits, here are the many reasons why his attempt to invoke executive privilege will fail. Number one, Trump v. Thompson and the rest of the Nixon era SCOTUS cases. Number two, Pence's book. Number three, the crime fraud exception. Justice Kavanaugh's concurrence in Trump v. Thompson presents the biggest roadblock for the DOJ. However, this argument would fail against a crime fraud exception whether or not the Supreme Court finds former presidents do have some residual executive privilege. The Supreme Court didn't allow Congress to access presidential records out of the kindness of their hearts. They did this to allow Congress to investigate an attack on our government. January 6th presented the Supreme Court the singularly unique situation and SCOTUS made its message clear by allowing Congress to review executive documents. As long as Mike Pence's testimony is limited to matters pertaining to January 6th, even if SCOTUS finds that former presidents have some residual executive privilege, crime fraud exception and Trump v. Thompson's central message would suggest that SCOTUS would rule in the Justice Department's favor, and Mike Pence would have to testify. Now, let me break that down a little bit. And I'm going to break that down uh, from the vantage point of Trump v. Thompson and the Kavanaugh concurrence. Before I do that, I want to briefly go over executive privilege again. Executive privilege is an executive branch tool by which the president can shield some of the communication and information that uh, was recorded and made available and part of presidential records that during in the course of the president's duties in the office of the president, the president would think would be um, unwise or inappropriate to be made public, made uh, available to the press or to Congress or uh, to any other party. So now executive privilege is not a blanket uh, provision, a blanket shield and a blanket protection for the president, whether, you know, for the current president and, you know, more, even more so for a former president. Executive privilege doesn't apply when there is, when it is information about a crime or fraud. Executive privilege does not apply as it pertains to January 6th. An executive privilege does not apply with matters over which Mike Pence has written a book and it's been made a public knowledge. So I want to look at it from the vantage point of Justice Kavanaugh's concurrence and point out that it is my bet that when Donald Trump goes to argue executive privilege in order to shield Mike Pence's testimony, uh, block Mike Pence's testimony, he will do it on the basis of the residual executive privilege that 
Justice Kavanaugh wrote about in his concurrence in Trump v. Thompson. Now, what happened in Trump v. Thompson? In Trump v. Thompson, Donald Trump sued the select January 6th committee, Chairman Thompson, Benny Thompson, in his capacity as chairman of the select committee, to stop it from accessing presidential records as it pertained to January 6th from the National Archives after the incumbent president, Joe Biden, waived executive privilege of the presidency as it pertained to those documents specified to the events on and surrounding January 6th. Now, the question was raised of executive privilege as a creature. Now, in the case of Trump v. Thompson, without ruling on the substantive matter of executive privilege, the court, in a very short opinion, ruled that because Donald Trump didn't raise the issue of executive privilege of a former POTUS and because the exec current incumbent had waived the privilege and that Congress and the executive branches were working together, it allowed National Archives to give the documents to the select committee. In his concurrence, Justice Kavanaugh points out that the Supreme Court didn't on its own volition raise the issue of the executive privilege of a former POTUS, but that issue remains one that the Supreme Court would be interested in discussing. Fast forward to this case. Donald Tr so from Trumpy Thompson, it is clear that executive privilege, which is an executive branch tool that is invoked in the name of the Department of Government whose name the privilege is invoked, the executive branch. And it doesn't, it doesn't apply to matters pertaining to January 6th. Donald Trump's argument that is left, that has any viability of reaching Supreme Court and delaying as long as it can, will be that he has residual executive privilege from his time as former president of the United States and therefore his communications with his vice president, whatever they were about, were covered under that executive privilege, residual executive privilege. But the reason why that would not be successful in the situation of January 6th, especially since this grand jury subpoena is from a grand jury that is investing January 6th, much like how the committee, the select committee, January 6th committee, was investigating and, uh, sorry, investigating January 6th specifically the Supreme Court allowed that to happen. And in this case, because DOJ's grand jury is about January 6th, communica communications which are part of a criminal proceeding, ongoing criminal investigation, thought to be part of uh, a crime, are not covered by executive privilege. So even if there was residual executive privilege of a former POTUS, the fact that this is a criminal investigation, that this is a DOJ grand jury criminally investigating the event of January 6th, the crime fraud exception would apply. And it would trump, for lack of a better word, any residual executive privilege of a former POTUS. Now, then there is, you know, 
then there's Mike Pence's book and the fact that he talks about all of this already to the public. I mean, it would be worth it would be worth corroborative, you know, value for them to have Mike Pence talk about those incidents that he talked about in his book under oath. You know, and and a lot of scholars have said that Mike Pence is the kind of uh, uh, witness that you call it at the very end of while you're tying up all the investigations to sort of, you know, cherry on the, on the Sunday sort of a uh, uh, witness. And uh, we'll just have to see whether Mike Pence cooperates or not. The whole purpose of this executive privilege proceeding is to delay. It's a delay tactic. Donald Trump's delay. Uh, I don't believe that at this point, I don't think that Jack Smith is not going to wait until after this executive privilege battle is over because, I mean, hell, they've waited this long, so why not just wait long enough, you know, longer? Donald Trump wants to use this executive privilege, privilege case to keep going as long as it can until you know, the primary season begins or, you know, it gets closer to the elections and, and there's a stronger case for it being delayed until after the elections. I don't know what, uh, I don't know what still delays uh, there are because, you know, Jack Smith is at Mike Pence. He's, I mean, you cannot get any more, um, any more of those, uh, any close, closer to Donald Trump, uh, officially. And so, uh, you know, Joyce Ellen talked about in her, in her latest Substack uh, article about the fact that we don't know a lot of these executive privilege, uh, you know, uh, cases and motions that come up because they happen under seal. Uh, so we may not find out what will happen with this executive uh, privilege case, but we'll know whether or not Donald Trump's executive privilege assertion works by seeing when Mike Pence goes to the courthouse where the you know DOJ grand jury is sitting. So we'll just have to see, wait and see. But... That's this is what the executive privilege game is, and uh, you know, looking at it, you have to wonder why Justice Kavanaugh felt the need to include that in the concurrence. Uh, it's it's all of this is just way too predictable for my comfort. You know, it's it's just too. It's the way that Justice, if you read the Trump v. Thompson concurrence of Justice Kavanaugh, you'll you'll read, it reads nothing short of Justice Kavanaugh telling Donald Trump's legal people that, hey, the next time you bring up executive privilege, don't talk about the executive privilege that he had as president of the United States, talk about the executive privilege that he has as a former president of the United States, because that's not something that we have uh, ruled on before. And, you know, this situation with Mike Pence presents as, you know, as, as, as opportune a time for them to discuss this issue of executive privilege of a former POTUS, because it is between the vice president and the president who were both, you know, one was orchestrating the insurrection and the conspiracy surrounding the insurrection, and the other was being pressured to be part of it. So from the vantage point of executive privilege under this, under any other circumstance, that situation of residual executive privilege would be a sound argument because this is between the president and the vice president of what their communications were. But 
because it is now part of a criminal probe, the crime fraud exception overrules any residual executive privilege a former president could have. But that issue needs to be litigated. And that's, that is going to buy time. And the question is, how much time? You know, will it be expedited for the Supreme, for the, for the judicial courts? Expedited means three months, you know? So that's the whole game here. It's not to win on the merits, okay? Donald Trump doesn't have a case on the merits. It's to delay because this is the last stop before Jack Smith can wind up his case in the grand jury and the grand jury can come to a conclusion. So we wait and we see what happens. But this is another one, another typical Trumpian wrench into the process. It's not about the merits, it's about the delay. It's about exploiting due process of law. It's about frivolity. It's about the corruption of what we use, the rule of law and due process of law, to make society a thriving place rather than, uh, you know, a cesspool of corruption. But Donald Trump uses it, exploits it, to buy him time. This has been proven over and over and over again. This is no different. With that said, thank you so much for watching. If you got this far, please like and subscribe and click the bell notification. It helps me immensely. And uh, stay engaged. I'll see you soon.